Marcus Oil. Late Model Dirt Series, Dirt Nationals, presented by Magna Flow Exhaust. See all the fans lined up there getting some autographs from their favorite drivers, purchasing some shirts along the way. That's what it's all about, man. Make a memory. That's what's really cool about this series. They have a driver autograph session before every single event. You see Jimmy Owens there signed an autograph. Owens with a great starting spot as we get set for tonight's main event. And they fire up these 800 horsepower monsters and get them rolling here. We also heard a couple of things. Tim McCready mentioned that they were racing earlier today. So needless to say, this track has changed substantially from the afternoon to the evening. Here's a look at where we're at. Gibsonton, Florida, just outside of Tampa. This racetrack has a lot of history. It's been here for a long, long time, and these guys know it very well. It does change with the moisture in the air, the moisture in the bay, as they keep an eye on the mud puddle, if you will, as it <laughs> rises and falls. As that's a great indicator of the moisture that will be in the track. And Don O'Neill seems to think this is going to be a one-lane track here tonight. Let's talk about the starting grid. Mike Marler on the pole alongside Brad Neat. Good starting spot for the Bobby Labonte Racing number 41 inch. You see Eric Wells, Jimmy Owens in row two. Go back to Kid Rocket starting in the third row outside. Josh Richards. Dennis Herb Jr., old night time winner. Here's this racetrack. We'll start back in row four. Tyler Reddick, who picked up a win earlier this season alongside the real deal. Don O'Neill, Rick Eckert. Jared Landers, David Brasile, Austin Hubbard, Eddie Carrier Jr., and then your reigning champ, Scott Bluthwitz, back in row eight. Wild man Dan Schlieper on the inside of T-Mac Timmy McCready in row number nine, Donnie Moran and Eric Jacobson in row ten, Big Coffee and Billy Boyer Jr., Kit Smooth in row 11, Roe Pearson Jr., and Ray Cook in row 12. We'll fill out the field with row 13, Tim Eisenberg, and Davey Johnson, and let's get it up to the official series announcer, James Essex. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our traditional full white parade lap before the cameras. As we channel taping tonight's race as well as tomorrow, but up on your feet, ladies and gentlemen, at a turn number four at parade lap. 27 cars tonight, 50 laps, $10,000 to the winner. Here at East Bay Raceway Park, the 25th Star International is presented by Magna Flow Exhaust. Everybody up on your feet, here they are, ladies and gentlemen. Give them a big send-off. We're good back here on the back. That's the way this is sent back. Yeah, good job back there. Say what I want now is I want the 54 and the 19 to hold your pace. And on the front row, I want you to follow and I want me to want you to go. Follow and need go. 54 and 19 to hold your pace. And race control there, Richie Lewis, the series director, giving some direction some of the guys up there to get them back in formation to talk about these cars. Awesome race cars. 2250 to 2300 pounds. VA power, 8 to 900 horsepower. And you heard uh, Tim McCready talk about the Hoosier tires. You can also run American Racers. 14 inch diameter, 11 inches wide. Very awesome race cars here. One thing that's cool though is you heard Richie Lewis talking to these drivers. He's the only guy that can talk to these drivers. They have no mirrors. They have no radios other than the Richie Lewis. And of course, no spotter. So when you get out on the racetrack, you can adjust the brake bias, and that's it. And that's what the race receiver is. That is contact with race control. You can only listen. You cannot talk back. Coming to one to go. You're coming to one to go. We're going to show you one to go this time, by 50 laps, gentlemen. 50 laps. I'm going to get it all done at once. And, of course, that's by design that they don't want to talk back to them because they can get a little ugly from time to time. Ricky Lewis will be very busy here this evening up here at Race Control. Is that back to you now? All right, 36. You set the pace. 36 starts the race. Let's get this thing going. Get through the first lap of here. years. See if you can find somebody to race. So Mike Marler gets the instructions that they're going green this time around. Time to tighten those belts down. Elbows up. Here we go. And Marler charges hard into turn number one right off the bat. Good side-by-side -side action. The 41 car hanging right there on the right rear and now pulls right up the side. That's what dirt late model racing is all about. Yeah, Brad Neat using that high line to take the lead and lead lap number one. Getting past Mike.
Mike Marlin, Jimmy Owens, moving into that third spot in the 20 car. Eric Wells and the 90 of Eisenberg. Right now, your top five is Brad Neat. Oh, Richard's getting pulled away. Brad Neat did pick up a heat race win earlier this season. So the cars that there, but in future events, has really like that 1921st, he has struggled. Mike Marler, on the other hand, has had some solid top 10 efforts so far this season. Yeah, Marler's a former winner right here at East Bay Raceway. If we go back to the 25, that is Josh Richard. Battle for six with a multi-time winner national champion here at this track, in the third junior. Well, you can almost hear the tires just going out there. It would appear as though there's a lot of grip right now. We well, heard the guys talk about making a choice, and uh, will you gamble? What we really meant by that is if you go with a soft tire, meaning you'll be fast at the beginning of the race. If you go with a brick or the harder tire, hopefully you get the long green flag run, and you'll be good at the end of the race. Yeah, you can really abuse the harder compound tire. A lot more than you can the soft one. Could it be the way to go? Well, we'll find out. Just about 50 laps. It just got the A-Main started. There's a bunch of guys who up. Stop by. Stay with us. 